marble effect. Do you like the marble effect, Terry? Yes, I do. It does, and with a little bit of chocolate drizzled across and a few little, a few little decorations placed. They should, oops, <laughs> they nearly went that way. So would you like to shout who gets the first Terry hello today? Oh, it's people saying no sound. It's on. Is anyone still having problems with sound? Can you hear us in the kitchen? Okay now. Whoa. Are we alright now? Because you can hear us. Now they've got sound. Oh, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> We've got everyone saying hello. We've got Suzanne saying good morning. We've got Paula, N uh, Nydia, Abigail, Dawn, Kathy Eaton, Teresa, Gwen, Pauline, Lynn Woodward. We've got lots of good We've mornings. Well, for those who didn't have sound when we first... I don't know why, because Terry had the sound on. Um, mm -hmm. I'm making macarons, and I'm going to do Valentine's macarons for Valentine's Day. So it's about uh, just over three weeks away. So we're going to make some strawberry milkshake flavoured and then put some gorgeous buttercream in the centre. Melt some dark chocolate down, just a couple of drizzle lines, and just put a few little decorations on. I've got little, the little Valentine's hearts and uh, little balls there. Not over-decorated, just put a few on. And these are the purple cupcake sprinkles, so we're going to use a few of those. Now, I was going to do them this morning. I, I never thought um, I would, I'd been making them today, but I've done them with polenta and I've also done them with semolina. And then I realised I might as well do those on Friday. So on Friday, I'm going to do free from macarons for all those people who don't can't have nuts or don't like nuts. And I'm just going to show you. These ones are the ones with... Semolina. <laughs> I had to think then. These ones, I've done these ones with some semolina. Now these have turned out pretty okay with the semolina. So that's the semolina ones. And then these are the, uh, the, the polenta ones. It's the polenta powder, you know, like the ground polenta, dried polenta. And I've made these with the polenta. Now Terry has took one for the team and tasted one of each. And she says they're actually very nice. So for those people who don't like uh, the nuts and they can't have almonds and they don't like the taste of the nuts, we can do them with the ground polenta and the um, semolina. So I'm going to do these on Friday for you to show you how we do those. Put those away. Still got ladies coming on saying good morning. So good morning to all. Right, what I'm going to do then, I'm only making, in the, on the recipe website, it's a 250 gram mix for the whipping it up. But because I've already got some macarons here and we're all on diets and we don't want to be macroned out, I'm going to do half a portion. So I'm going to do the 125 grams of whipping it up and then I'm going to have 90 grams of ground almond, which I have sieved three times to make sure there is no lumps in there. And we've got 25 grams of natural flavoured icing sugar. Any questions yet? Are we okay? And that, with the water, which is like 50 ml of water, that is all you need to make your macarons with a little bit of, with a little bit of colour. So they are all the ingredients you need to make your gorgeous macarons. And then to fill them, I'm gonna fill them with buttercream. Uh, I'm gonna do um, a velvet vanilla buttercream just to fill them, and then we'll do some decorating. So let's get these out of the way. The oven's preheating to 150 degrees C, which is gas mark two. Just going to check that for you. Gas mark to um, 275 Fahrenheit. So the oven's already on there now because we don't need to. We we don't need to um, rest them. Are we all right there, Sylvester? Good morning. Yep, we're live. I'll, I'll feed you. Yeah. Did I'll you feed you should be next to her. Yeah. Right. Thank you. <laughs> set from the warehouse he was just checking on something so here we go i'm going to whip up the uh whipping it up meringue now so i've got 125 grams and i'm using the strawberry milkshake now again 
please make sure that your bowl and your whisk are completely grease free otherwise you won't get a meringue coming to the stiff peaks. Uh, we've got a question, are they normal ground almonds? Yes, yes they're just ground, they're, they're ground but what I do is I sift them about two or three times so that you get, because even though they're, they're all ground you do get some little bits of um, coarser hard ones that don't go through the sieve so put them through a fine sieve two or three times so you get them really really fine. So I'm going to do 50 mils of tepid water. There we go. And put this into the bowl. Just start this off slow, just so we don't get an icing sugar cloud there. So just keep patting the bowl down so all the whipping it up's going into the water. So we've got people coming on. Morning. Good morning. And uh, Nikki King's debating whether she needs to wear a bra for her Morrison's delivery. No. <laughs> just put a big cardio over your top and never even notice. <laughs> You don't get dressed up for delivery drivers, do you? <laughs> well, it depends who they are. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit, I, there was an Amazon delivery on Saturday morning. I was still in my gym jam, and so I didn't have my bra or anything. And I didn't have my cardio on either. And he comes to the door and he says to my daughter, you go to the door, because I can't answer the door looking like this. Right, I'm going to turn this up now. And we're going to whisk this until we get some nice stiff peaks on it. And into a separate bowl, we're going to put the 90 grams of ground almonds. As you can see, they're super nice and fine. I've sifted them three times, so I've got them all nice and fine. And into that is going 25 grams of flavoured icing sugar. I've used strawberry milkshake because I've used a strawberry milkshake whipping it up. And I'm just going to mix that all together. Elizabeth loves the colour of the mixer. Right. Yeah, we're doing a change because we've got we've got a few mixers in here. As you know, Carol loves mixers, and we used to have a lot of classes in here, so we always had a lot of mixers. We're going to start alternating which mixers come down, so you're always going to see some different coloured mixers now. Yeah, we also wants to let you know that she uh, made the angel cake, but not gluten free, and it turned out absolutely perfect. Oh, amazing! It was my husband. I took four slices home. Because my husband, when I walked through the door, he said, I saw you making angel cake. He looked at me and went, yes, Carol, let me bring you a couple of pieces home. And he dived on it. He loved it. And you liked it as well, didn't you, Terry? Oh, I, it was one of my favourites. <laughs> I remember saying that. <laughs> right, I'm going to be gluten-free. Ask Simon could take some home as well. I think he was really happy because it was gluten-free. But isn't it tasty? It looks so pretty, doesn't it, with the three colours when you're doing the three colours? Yeah. So this is just starting to get a little bit thicker now, but we do need to get it to stiff peaks. Uh, well, I'm to think, um, I've got a template. Let me, uh, I'll show you my template. I'm going to get Terry or uh, Carol. They're going to put this on the website for you. So you've got, as you can see there, I've just got a little bit of icing on there. So there's my template there for my heart. Now, with those hearts, you really do need to stay within the lines. You don't need to go over because they'll spread. So I actually just stay just within the lines on it. You have to have a steady hand while you're piping. I'm going to use a number 12 piping nozzle. A number 12. You can use a number 10 if you want, but I'm going to use a number 12. And I'm just going to do a nice pipe on the lines, on the grease proof. And that way we can put them onto the tray. So it's just going to be like that so you can do the template over it. As I said, we are going to get this heart's template onto the website if it's not there already for you. It'll go onto the community page. This is starting to mix up nice and thick. So what I am going to do, I'm just going to knock down that spare icing, uh, the spare whipping it up I can well, see. questions here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that 90 grams after sifting? Yes. Yeah, I, uh, what I did was I sift, I sift the bag 
and I sift it about, I sifted it three times. So I do it into one bowl, then into another bowl and that. And then I did the weighing out to make sure because there was quite a few grams that was quite hard. I mean, you could have pushed it through the tip, but you're going to get the hard bits in your macarons. So that's why I always sift it and then I weigh after that I've sifted it. And where can we find the recipe? The recipe is on the website. And <laughs> Terry's just about to put the recipe website up for you now. It's the sugar and crumbs mixing it up .co .uk. So it's on the bottom of the screen now. The recipe is on that. And you can put whipping it up macarons in, or just put macarons, and your recipe will come up. And just a quick one to recap how much whipping it up have you used? Right, today, today, I'm going to get, I'll, today, the mix I'm doing today is I get 24 hearts, so it'll make 12 macarons, and that is 125 grams of whipping it up flavour of your choice, 90 grams of ground almond, and 25 grams of flavoured natural icing sugar of your choice, and that is what we're going to use, and it's um, 50 mils of water, and it's got tepid, tepid water. And that will make you 24 macarons, which actually makes 12 whole ones when you put two together. It's a nice amount if you want to do a few for the family, if you want to just have 12. It's just a nice amount, that. And that's starting to really come to stiff peaks now. I'm just going to leave it a little bit longer there. And just tell the way it moves in the bowl, it's not quite got to the stiff peak yet. Thank you to everyone who has liked and shared today. And what do you think of the new video that Terry's done for sharing the love for Valentine's, isn't it? Isn't it a great video? You just saw it before we came on live then and it was launched over the weekend. Isn't it superb? And you got to see all the staff in the warehouse as well so you could see the staff in the warehouse and, and try and put some names to faces. Try to include everyone. And as you can see, we are a lovely, happy bunch. And Karen does appear twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how many positions that she has. <laughs> I got on the I noticed that when I was watching the video. I thought, wow, I got on twice. I got on when I was doing the nozzles down in reception. And then I got on when I was in the kitchen in here. And I love the one on Carol with the wing in its side. Don't you all love that one? That <laughs> is just so funny. Every time I watch it, that face. It's a face when she gives you the kiss at the end. She goes, mmm. <laughs> Let's just have a look at where we are with this now. So there we go. I've got some lovely stiff peaks. As you can see, Ooh. the meringue is not drooping. Because in this kitchen, we don't like droopers. So I'm going to knock all that into the bowl. There we go. Put that out of the way. So in this bowl now, I'm just going to put half of the meringue mix, mix it in, and then put the other half in. <laughs> Nikki King says she wants, I want names to all the warehouse <laughs> Second family vibes. <laughs> and Alka asks, is it available in India at the moment? It isn't. Is it? No, it's not at the moment. I'm so sorry. So I'm just trying to gently, I don't want to knock every, all the air out of it, but I'm trying to fold the meringue mix into the ground almonds and icing sugar mix. And once I've got this nearly mixed, I'm going to add the other half of the meringue mixture. We've got quite a few people mentioned TikTok now. So yes, we want you to keep your eyes peeled for our new TikTok. It is our new platform that will be showing all of our beautiful creations on. And another thing, join TikTok. You don't have to use it. I mean, I, I, I joined TikTok for the first time at weekend. I haven't a clue what to do on TikTok, but I do know I could find Sugar and Crumbs and I can follow their videos. So just join TikTok just to follow Sugar and Crumbs. And then you see other good videos on there as well. There's always some daft people on TikTok. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely. definitely, but I would, I mean, just join it. I mean, I just joined it. I probably will never do a TikTok video in my life. 
I'm, I'm too old for that now. My daughter does them all the time and she'll spend hours watching TikTok. But when I watch the videos on there, join TikTok just to watch the sugar and crumbs ones because we're going to be doing a lot on there, aren't we, Terry? Yeah. So, yeah, get the app on your laptop, get it on your phone and everybody join TikTok. So I'm folding this into the mix. As you can see now, it's all folding nicely. Now I want to take this around the bowl and I'm going to go up the sides until it starts to come down on itself. And it takes probably about five or six turns. You try to knock some of the air out and making it smooth. So I'm doing it very carefully. Have you got any more questions yet or? Um, no, I just have Debbie saying her daughter that uh, hates that she's joined TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my daughter wasn't it's impressed mine. either. <laughs> it, the, the kids think it's theirs, don't they? Yeah. But I joined TikTok, but I didn't follow my daughter. I thought, no, you're all right. I'll just join TikTok and watch Sugar and Crumbs. <laughs> So I want to keep going round the bowl, going up the bowl, until the mixture starts to slide down the bowl like a little bit of an avalanche. It's not there yet, so it could take, depending on how warm the kitchen is, or how cold, it could take up to ten times, but you don't want to overmix it. So that's nearly starting to come down, you want it to slide down on itself. Now that's starting to come down, so what I'm going to do in a moment, because I want to mix some colour into it, so I'm going to finish off the last few couple of turns in the mixing bowl when I put the colour in. So that is near, I just want it a few more times. Jill Noy says, I joined TikTok at the weekend. I only did it once before. My granddaughter has me doing these mad dances. It's mortifying. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't post it, thank God. <laughs> well, that's what I did in the summer. My daughter, when it was all, the lockdown, they were, they were doing Zoom meetings. You know, in the summer when it was all on lockdown as well, because we're still there now. Um, they were doing Zoom meetings, and the loser had to do a TikTok video. Well, my daughter lost, and because I'd been helping with some of the questions, they went, your mum's got to join in, and she had me. <laughs> She's found this TikTok where you had to put an oversized sweatshirt on, so it just looked like it was over your knees, and you just had your arms there, and you had to do this bit of a dance. Well, she never posted it, thank goodness, because as soon as I started dancing, I fell straight over, I was like <laughs> a turtle, and I just said, that does not go on. But she sent it to her mates who said, right, that's all right now, you've run your forfeit. I'd love to see that. No. <laughs> no, it was not going on. So I'm going to do, I've split it in two now. I'm going to do one pink and I'm going to do one red. We've got people happy that you're doing these. Keep me in to have a go. They are, they are brilliant. I mean, they're, and they're so tasty, especially with our gorgeous flavours as well. So they really are tasty. So because I've got the colour in now, I'm going to keep going up the side of the bowl, just doing that last little bit of mix. I'll come into the centre there. Thank you. <laughs> I could feel her eyes burning into me. <laughs> she, didn't even have to, she didn't even have to say anything. <laughs> so I'm, I just want to, I don't, see, the last thing you want to do, you don't want to over mix. So I am just going up the sides, just so that I can still get it sliding down on itself again. Sophie also asks, would you use the same process of knocking the air out if you are making a meringue? No. You don't, because you, <laughs> I thought that's all you was going to say. No, no, no. no. With, with a meringue, you you mix it with the, you mix, you do your meringue mix, and you've got it all in the bowl. You put it straight into your piping bag, and then you just pipe your pavlova, you pipe your meringues or your meringue kisses. This is because I've got the almonds in it and the icing sugar. It's mixed it together and knocking a bit of the air out there. But then we've got Leslie asking, my macarons are a bit lumpy. Do you think I should have shifted almonds more? Sifted them, yes, and you also oh, yeah. can, yeah. I mean, um, you also can use um, like a baby, you know, like a baby grinder. You know, you, you grind them, um, you blend the baby's food down into it. It's only a little one. You can usually, if you can grind them you, as well. Yeah, 
a blast in the food processor. Yeah, it is. Um... How would you know if it is over mixed? Because it'll just go um, when it just it just goes really really runny again. Now that isn't runny. That's just nice and fur in the bowl. So that's not over. That's not over mixed because it's still retaining its dome shape that I've put it into. If you over mix it, it'll put it goes down to really really runny. And also you won't get the feet on it and you won't get the rise. Right, I'm just gonna. I've only got a tiny. <laughs> As you can tell, we're getting down to the dregs of our colours. Me and Carol have worked through those those chews because we only want to end up with one, one of each chew so again I'm just gonna as I'm going up the bowl just so that I can mix it in Mandy's just doing a clean up before she gets to whipping it up out <laughs> I'd have waited <laughs> do you clean up later <laughs> <laughs> She's preparing her workspace, Karen. Oh. <laughs> I, lo I love the whipping up uh, macarons. I absolutely think they're lovely. So I've got a, a nice red. Now that does mature a little bit more, but you see, it's a lovely contrast between my two colours there. Yeah. So I'm going to use my number, tw my number 12 tube. Now, I'm not going to cut the bag until I've got the mix in the bag. And I'm just going to spoon in a spoonful of each to see if I can like, get that nice swirl. So I'm just going to do a spoonful of each. Into the piping bag. Into the piping bag and then a spoonful Ooh. of the pink. And I'm just going to keep alternating that so I've got... What did you use to get it that red? I've used pink, it? no, I've used Christmas red. It's colour splash Christmas red. Ah. I'll squeeze that down the back. Get some more in. Here we go. So I'll just get this last. Slot in there, and then we'll get this last lot in as well. Them so that I can then so I've got my template and I've got my grease proof on the top oh, I'm excited <laughs> now, and now I'm ready just to cut the piping tube so I'm going to cut it there and straight across As you can see, it's starting to come out, so I'm just going to pipe. I'm staying within the lines. And I've just noticed, try not to get, leave any nobbles where I'll go through it because that actually, do, I've got a 
it'll give a bit of a knobbly look to it. <laughs> What size piping nozzle are you using? This is a number 12. Now you can do it without a piping nozzle if you want to, or you can, some people like to use a number 10, but a number 12 just is, I can just manage, like keep control of that. I'm just going to put that there. I'm just going to ask Terry just to turn the sound off because I'm going to bang this 10 times. So, just want to make sure that the little knobbly bits go down there and if you've got any air holes you can um, see they look nice and smooth now so I'm going to put those to one side while I just do the other one so I'll just slide that out And these will go in the oven, these go in the oven for 10 minutes, 10 to 11 minutes. I always check them at 10 minutes. With it being, uh, the colour the colour being quite deep, you might need another minute or so on it. So here we go. If it wasn't live, I'd have my tongue stuck out here with the concentration. <laughs> uh, I'd join you. It's like, so it's like, make it look so easy. It's like colouring but staying in, be in between the lines. <laughs> Mandy says, ooh, the concentration. <laughs> you can see it, can't you? I know. Right, I have got a little bit of mix left there, so what I'm going to do there is... Are you banging again? Not yet. Sarah says, oh, you're a lefty. I've got two in my household. <laughs> yes. Me and my husband are lefties and both my kids are righties. <laughs> so you just pull, pull your grease proof down just so... You're not wasting a very steady hand. So I'll get that last one out now. I've got enough just to get that other one out there. Now let's do some banging. Out that, it, it does. I didn't want <laughs> to. Like, oh, but oh, all oh, you oh. ladies who are wearing headphones, they want you to get deafened. Again, I'm just going to make sure there's the little knobbly bits have gone. They look absolutely fine. So these are going to be popped in the oven now for 10 minutes. So Divya says the lefties are supposed to be the clever ones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. What about me? <laughs> yes, I quite agree, although my husband might disagree with you. <laughs> right, there we go. A quick clean down. Oh, let um, me just put the timer on, you know what I'm like. <laughs> if I didn't put that timer on, I would have forgot all about them. I'd be enthralled in doing what I'm doing next. Right, so we've got a clean down there, that's great. We'll move these dirty pots just out over here out of the way. 
And the idea, when the macarons come out, leave them on the greaseproof paper until they've gone cold. What temperature? Uh, 150 degrees C, which is gas mark 2, 275 Fahrenheit. Leave them on the greaseproof till they are cold. If you try and peel them off too soon, you'll pull the backs out. Pull the backs out. <laughs> <laughs> you'll pull the backs out. Buttercream. Now, I have already started whipping my butter up. I didn't want to stand here for five minutes while I was whipping the butter up. So I'm just going to just give it another quick whirl while you're on. So you can see I've got that nice and creamy inside there. And then I've got I'm using velvet vanilla because I've used a lovely strawberry milkshake um, whipping it up. I've decided to do velvet vanilla buttercream. Now I've done a full block. I've done 250 grams of of, a, my, of butter, and I'm doing 500 grams of whipping it up uh, of, of natural flavoured icing sugar. I'm sorry. Now yeah, that's too much for the 12. But I've done this amount because I've got the other ones to, to uh, put together once they come out of the oven later. So again, we're going to put the natural flavoured icing sugar into the bowl. And we're going to chop that in. We're going to chop that in so we're not getting a massive icing cloud dust in the kitchen. I've got a little bit of a one here, but... And tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be eating macarons. <laughs> and by Christmas, Matthew, Terry's going to look like me. <laughs> well, as long as I can bake as good as you as well, that'd be great. <laughs> it's took me a lot of time to get this figure. <laughs> a, lot of dedica- a lot of dedication. <laughs> and having kids didn't help. I'm just warning you, Terry. Having kids doesn't help. Oh, I've got it all to come. <laughs> What's up, kittens, instead, shall I? <laughs> Here we go. That's nice and chopped in now. We'll get that back onto the mixer. How much butter do you use? In this bowl here is 250 grams of butter and 500 grams of natural flavoured icing sugar. Now, yes, it's too much to decorate the 12 macarons that I've got, but I have got to decorate some other macarons later. So you might want to, uh, you could have it, you could do the 125 grams of butter and 250 grams of natural flavoured icing sugar. Remember, the choice is yours on what you want to use. They're all delicious, all of them. Let's turn that up. I'm going to beat this for no more than 20 seconds. Let's have a look at that. Everyone's 
show before, by the way. It takes a lot of work to look like this. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of time and effort. Right. Piping bag, where's it gone? There it is. It's one. <laughs> I'm thinking, it's where's one. it gone? <laughs> so I'm going to use a 1M. Roll it down. Pop it in. Cut just where the uh, points end. There we go. So that's all in there. Put that out of the way. bag when you're putting the buttercream in because you can always keep filling your bag as you go along. I remember my first one with buttercream where it all slopped out the bag. <laughs> <laughs> you just started busting yeah. the seams so that's from doing too much. Yeah you only want just just about a handful. There we go and that's come through nicely. So put that to one side. Let's get the macarons back. Denise asked would the consistency of that buttercream be okay for cr crumb coating a cake? No, you want it a little bit softer for crumb coating because it, the consistency that is, it's great for piping into the macarons and probably on top of on to do your cakes. But to crumb coat, you want it a little bit softer as uh, you don't want to take all your cake off. You want it to, be, to go on nice and smooth. So you always do your crumb coating that little bit softer. Now I'm going to put them back onto this baking tray because this is where I want to decorate them in a moment. So a nice filling so we can we can actually taste it. Oh, they look Go to sort of throw my macarons. Now, if you didn't want to decorate with chocolate or with them, you can uh, you can do your macarons plain coloured. You could, don't have to um, you don't have to do the the little marbling effect, and you can dust with the fake hill and colour splash dollar colours and rainbow dust and the fractal. They all dust up beautifully. There. So I've got my 12 there. So as I said, I probably, you probably could get away, if you're only doing the 12, you only want to do 125 grams of butter and 250 grams of icing sugar. You probably still would have some left as well. So just cut, you can remember, you can save buttercream in the fridge. And what nozzle do you use to fill the macaron? I've used um, a 1M, a, a Wilton 1, 1M nozzle. I wonder who that was. <laughs> so I'm just going to get the chocolate out of the microwave. I've had it melting down. I just want to give it a couple of seconds blast on that because I want to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to spread these out. And thanks everyone again. We've got loads of people saying they liked and shared. Oh, brilliant. So I've got all those spaced down. So I'll do it on the pink board because then the pink board, I'll be able to clean that. That'll be absolutely fine for cleaning. I've got my little bag there ready for putting my chocolate into. And I've got my purple cupcakes sprinkles. These ones are called Love is in the Air and that is my beeper going. I'm 
show you this plate here, this tray. So there is the macarons and they've just took 10 minutes to do. So I'm going to leave those to cool completely. I slide them off the tray and just put the grease proof onto the, the cooling tray. Those there to cool. I'm just getting chocolate now. I've got my bag of calico here ready to just uh, cool the chocolate down. Jenny says they look beautiful. The ones that I just took out of the oven. Yeah. And they smell delicious. I second that. <laughs> So I was melting my, so it wasn't away too long. I melted the chocolate down before I left it in the microwave and I've just heated it up a little bit now. I'm just gonna put a little bit of, a few pellets in there just to bring the temperature down. I only used a handful of calyx just to um, to make the chocolate. It's all you needed. I mean, once it's you've used it, you can always put it back. You can let it set and then just put it back in the bag. Mm. I put them into separately. I put in a little Ziploc bag and I just put the Ziploc bag inside the big bag. So then that's what I'll use next time. There's no waste then because you don't add anything to the chocolate. There's absolutely no waste. Just let it uh, just let it set and put it into a Ziploc bag. Mandy said it's like watching Ollie with the whipping. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Mandy, Mandy. You get a good workout, don't you? <laughs> so, yeah, you can tell I am left handed because I always feel really weird doing it with my right hand, but my, my shoulder's hurting. So, it's left so that's got the, the few of the calots there are still staying whole, so I need to. Really work those down, otherwise I just have to get a fork and just move them to one side. I don't want the calots going inside the piping bag because it'll just block the hole up. There, I was making sure that I'm not getting those little callots in there. I'm just moving them out of the way. If you're filling your chocolate moulds, you'd be absolutely fine with a few little lumps like that. It's uh, when you're actually piping a, a line across, you don't want any hard bits in your piping bag. Squeeze that down to the bottom. So no, there will never be any waste of chocolate with Terry in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put a little knot in that. Just keeps it all together. And then I'm going to cut the tiniest hole at the top. So it's just, you know me and chocolate, we don't go. I'm surprised I've not got it all over me yet. The key word being yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> tiniest hole that was oops tiny and then I just want to just 
leave that there one minute and I'm going to put decorate it I just want to uh, put a few on but I'll make it if I do it into the chocolate now I know it's sticking into the chocolate using your tweezers because you can actually pick up the colours that you want you also have done that one as I say you always make it look easy <laughs> <laughs> um, do another one. See, so if your bag seals because your bag your bag might seal at the bottom because your your chocolate's going cooler. Just give it a squeeze and it will come out again. She says. Just give that a warm with my fingers. Very pretty, very lovely. They look amazing. Cute. There we go. Well, she says. She says. Oops. That one's mine. Remember, <laughs> if you get a spoiled one, it's chef's treat. <laughs> or camera person's treat. Debbie says they need to be in my belly. If you wanted to, you could go all the way. And can you freeze them? You can you freeze. Yes, you can freeze macarons. Make sure you do them between greaseproof paper. And then defrost fully at room temperature. Can you do it while they're decorated? Yes, I don't see why not. And also, which sprinkles are they? These are the edible sprinkles. I'm just going to put that on there just to hide that that rotten chocolate. There we go. Remember, if it's if one if one uh, comes out wrong, cover it in sprinkles. Cover it in sprinkles. <laughs> but you just know that you're going to give that to somebody like Terry on the camera. <laughs> the finishing touches are beautiful. people willing to do taste tests <laughs> <laughs> if only we was open to the public again one day and Jackie Adams has spotted you've missed one on the top right oh thank you Jackie you eagle eyed people you no macaron will go unchocolated on this show it won't, it won't. <laughs> Let's put a nice... Good ball there. So you get the idea. We just wanted to just put a couple there. You could just put... You don't have to decorate all of them up. Oh, that's nice. Just press them lightly into the chocolate. Just the chocolate starting to set a little bit there. Shows it's been tempered well. Mm. So I'm just pressing it in because if I just press it, I can just feel it catching. Okay. Oh. 
looks too much. It was a cry. <laughs> it's just a uh, see that has just started to seal again. Sprinkle a few over there. So you could just do all one colour if you wanted to. And I'm going to leave some, I'm going to leave a couple undecorated. So there, I mean, that one is just rubbish. <laughs> Because that's just got a thick band of chocolate. That just, might be someone's favourite, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> just trying to fill that in a little bit. So it could be just, you could have just done one thick band on purpose. So there we have some lovely macarons. Let's put them onto. Can you buy those templates, Maureen asks? No, you can download them off our website or you can do them off Google, uh, but Terry's going to put it on the website later, aren't you? The, temp the, the heart template. And then you can just uh, download it and print it off yourself. We do have lots of different templates on the website because we did one at Christmas when they were doing the snowmen and the Christmas trees, so we do have plenty. So let's move that out of the way. A quick tidy up. That's how cold it is. That chocolate has set already, Terry. That's how. <laughs> That's how good you did it. It's how it's how, it's, it's how good it was tempered, but it's how cold it is as well. There we mm. go. These will look amazing on a uh, romantic afternoon tea. <laughs> <laughs> So there we go, so I'm just going to show you like that lid. So these are what I've used. I've used edible sprinkles. This is called Love is in the Air. It's got all the different coloured of hearts and different coloured of the little sugar balls in. And this one is called Shimmer Hearts. And it's just some lovely, they look like pearlized little white hearts. They're gorgeous. We do as you know, we do loads of, of other ones. We've also got these ones, which are called Shimmer Hearts Multi. So you've got blues and reds and oranges and yellows in there and pinks. You've got your torpedoes, which are your macaroni rods. These are called Fiesta. We've got the bumblebees. We've got this gorgeous one as well, which is the Unicorn Dreams. Just gonna get them in there like that, and we've got these. We've got um, opulence mix, which is all gold, silver, and lovely pearl colour. And then you've got this one, which is the uh, dazzle high shine, and they're like a turquoise, a silver. It looks like a bit of a gunmetal grey. Absolutely beautiful. These are rainbow ten millimeter balls. Look at those. How good, how nice are those colours? Mm. And really these nice. are your pastel. These are called Refreshers Mix. Just reminds me of the Refreshers oh, when yeah, you were kids. It, yeah, they just remind me of those colours. It's the it's the gorgeous, the, the limes, the whites, the very pale lemons. It's like a bit of, a, of the purple. They look, just look like the Refresher Sweets. Yeah, Gillian asks, what do you look for under the templates on the website? It's, um, it's beyond the community page, it's not on the actual website, it's on the community page. They'll be going, the templates. The, the templates will go on the community page and they'll probably be put them in, we'll put them in units so you can find them. So they'll be actually on Sugar and Crumbs um, Facebook, page. Facebook page and we'll put them in the unit section there so you can find them there. And here we go, we've got Rainbow Mix, which is all stars, oh, nice. balls and little rods. And again, this one is the Mermaid Mix. It's a little bit different. You've got, it's got your mermaid colours of your lovely lilacs, pinks, whites, little uh, lime green. Absolutely beautiful. So we've got loads of uh, purple cupcake sprinkles for you to go at, as well as all our sprinklicious range will go on as well. But what do you think of those? They are beautiful. 
And the tray has just cooled down over there. So I'll just bring the other ones over that we've made today and you can see those before we go. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna peel them off the paper until they're completely cold. There you go. These are nearly cold now. So look, you've got lovely feet on them, and they'll be ready in another half an hour for me to uh, I can buttercream those up. But take them off really carefully. If you feel like they're not coming off, just leave them because once they've gone absolutely cold, you can peel them off really well. So many compliments for you, Karen. Beautiful. They look really yummy. Um, we've got incredible, gorgeous. Thank you. So thank you all and thank you for liking and sharing and don't forget tonight in the kitchen tonight it's um, Rachel Hannah and it's all about sugar paste. She's going to show you how to cover your cakes and achieve your sharp corners and straight edges so don't forget to tune in at 8 o'clock for that and then tomorrow we have Carol doing ice malt in the afternoon. Oh. It's going to be fun, isn't it? We're going to do ice melt in the afternoon. And then Wednesday, me and Carol are not having a day off. We're doing a day of cellophane and tissue cutting and wrapping so that we can sell the tissue and cellophane for all our cupcake bouquets. And then Thursday, we have Carol and her grandchildren back in the kitchen doing chocolate butterfly cakes. How good is that? That really takes me back to when my mum used to do it with me as well, chocolate butterfly cakes. They were, the, they were always the first cake that you learned to make was a butterfly cake. And on the night time, we've got Cicely. Cicely Sutherland's back in at night time. I'm not too sure what she's making, but whatever she does, it's always superb. So we've got Cicely back in. And then Friday, I'm back on my Free From Friday. And I'm going to show you the Free From Mac I'm going to make them with the uh, semolina and I'm also going to make them with the fine polenta. So we've got a fun filled weekend and in between all that we've got Tracy Mann on. So we really have got a busy week ahead and thank you so much for joining me today and Carol will see you all later at 8 o'clock. Bye.